A runway incursion just a couple days ago leads to a go around in a near collision and a catastrophe in Manila. The air traffic controller working the tower saves the day. Let's watch this one. Okay, the first player in this is a PAL Express. P-A-L. It's a Philippine airline based out of Manila. Uh, they're, they're owned by the Air Philippines Corporation. They're flying an Airbus A320. Uh, the weather is not good in Manila today. It's raining, uh, but they've been cleared uh, for landing on uh, runway six. The winds are yeah, basically right down the runway at about eight knots. Uh, there is water on the runway. That doesn't really have much of a factor here, although it falls into the excuse category later. You're going to see why. But PAL is on final. He's been cleared to land on runway six. Everything is going fine until this happens. There to land, he says. Everybody's excited. Meanwhile, taxi Okay, our second player now is Golf Air 155. This is a 787 uh, operated by Golf Air, uh, and they're taxiing out. And so they're telling them, telling the uh, the tower controller where they are. And the tower controller tells them to taxi to the runway and gives them specific instructions. Let's see how they do with that specific instruction. Tower, good afternoon. Flight Charlie, cross 23-1, hold short of Echo 5. Okay, so I'm going to hold it right there. Right on Charlie, cross runway 31, hold short of Echo 5. That's a typical instruction. You're going to get that every day of the week uh, when you're taxiing out. So there's to turn right onto taxiway, Charlie. Then they're going to cross a runway, runway 31. Now remember, this guy, uh, the PAL airplane has been cleared to land on runway 6. That's not runway 31. So the runway 31 is a different runway, but they're cleared to cross. They don't have to stop and ask for permission. They've already been cleared. And then they're going to hold short of a crossing taxiway way down the line called Echo 5. Echo 5 is going to come back and be a player here before we're done, but not for the reasons that you think. Here we go. How do they do? Right on Charlie, cross runway uh, 31 and uh, short, short, Echo 5 goes there. One point. Hey, they got the read back, correct? That's good. That's step number one. Oh, no. They just passed Charlie and they turned onto the runway. Now, the runway and the taxiway are not easy to confuse. Runways are huge and wide and lit with, with lights down the sides and, and there's big white lines down the, the center of them. Taxiways are much more narrow. They've got maybe sometimes a line that you follow, but they've got blue lights on the edges, not white lights on the edges. But they've turned on to the runway. They're probably wondering why they have all this space on this taxiway. There doesn't seem to be a lot of curiosity just yet on the part of Gulf Air. But we're going to see if this thing ends up in a catastrophe or not. Look, I need to get so real for a minute. I eat out way too much on the way to the airport at my destination, layover delays. My schedule is crazy, but I have another problem. I get home, I'm exhausted from all the travel, and I just don't want to cook. Like the idea of having to go through all that prep work to make a hot meal makes me just want to go to sleep. That's where the sponsor of today's video, Factor, comes in to save the day. Factor meals eliminate the hassle of preparing cooking and cleaning up. Simply heat and savor the good stuff. And with my in and out schedule, Factor is flexible. You can change your order up to every week with plans from four to 18 meals per week or pause or reschedule your deliveries anytime. And it tastes good. I mean, just look at that man. Gosh, he looks so happy right now. This is the face of a man who is enjoying his meal with reckless abandon. Ah, uh, oh. All right, where was I? Oh, Factor. <laughs> Factor takes the stress out of meal planning and sets you up for success. Skip the grocery stores, 
prep work, and cooking fatigue. Instead, get chef-crafted, dietitian approved meals delivered right to your door. With over 35 meals to choose from per week, including options like keto, calorie smart, vegan, and veggie, and more. Head to factor75.com or click the link below and use code 50 Captain Steve to get 50% off plus free shipping on your first Factor box. And thanks to Factor for sponsoring this video. They're on the runway, taxiing the wrong way. Okay, now the tower calls back to the PAL aircraft, and they're going under the call sign 2986. He calls them Air Phil, Air Philippines 2986. He tells them runway heading to 4000. Wait a minute, they just got cleared for the approach to land. Is he calling a go around? Anytime you hear a further instruction, and even if it doesn't include the words go around, you're to comply with those instructions. Now, this is a little confusing because remember anticipation bias? They're anticipating coming into land, not going around, and they didn't hear the expression go around. So he's going to call back and clarify. I, I would. He's got plenty of time here. He's going to clarify what exactly it is that the tower wants them to do. Okay, so he calls him back a second time and says, this time, go around, and he gives him the reason, traffic on the runway. Giving the reason is very helpful for the pilots especially because they're going to want to key up the mic and say, well, why are you telling me to go around? That just wastes time, especially if he needs you to go around and, and because he's got somebody on the runway. So you can tell that the tower controller now is, is trying to get the words out as fast as he can. He's got this big old 787 taxiing on his runway. He doesn't have time to deal with him right now. He needs to get the Philippine air aircraft going around. So this tower controller is totally on his A game. He's got the uh, Air Philippines airplane now going around. Now he's going to turn his attention to the Gulf Air who's on the runway. Here's what he says next. So on the runway, continue on runway right on Echo Fort. All right, he says to him, just continue down and exit on Echo Fort. Okay, so he's read it back again. Now, meanwhile, the uh, the um, Gulf uh, airplane, the Gulf airplane is taxiing down the runway. The Philippine airplane is going around. He's going to fly runway heading, so he's going to fly right over top this guy. It's not really all that close. He's he's quite a bit above him, but he's still, you know, they could have collided here for sure. So this these guys now on the runway, they're looking for Echo Four. They've realized that they've messed up. They've really just sort of screwed this thing up totally. All they've got to do is get off on Echo 4, which is the next taxiway in front of them. Let's see how they do with that after they read back that instruction. Echo 4, left on Charlie, Gulf Air 155. Echo 4, left on Charlie, Gulf Air 155. He got a little, I'm sorry about that in. He gives Air Philippines a vector. Echo so 5, right, Echo 4, left on Charlie, hold for Echo 5. Right, uh, Romeo, right, Echo 4, left on Charlie, hold for Echo 5, Delta 155, Delta 155. Okay, so he's given him the instruction twice now. He's read it back twice now. Are they going to turn on Echo 4? Echo 155, make right turn on Echo 4. Delta 155, we Echo 4, which means Romeo 5. Okay, so three times he gave him the instruction to turn right on Echo 4. Twice he read it back. The third time he didn't have time. They blow by Echo 4. They're still on the runway, these guys. All right, they're clobbering the whole thing. Seven, five, five, Roger. Romeo 5, left Charlie, hold for the Echo 5. Romeo 5, left and Charlie, and the Echo 5, left the Echo 5. Okay, so let's try Romeo 5 and hold short of Echo 5. Remember that from earlier? That's where they were supposed to end up, was Echo 5. They finally make it. Under Romeo 5. Ah, okay. Sorry about that, he says. It was too much rain. We couldn't see that turn. We missed that turn. Sorry, buddy. Keep your excuses to yourself at this point, right? You taxied onto a runway. You, you read back the instructions. You missed the instructions. If you're not sure where you are, stop. Stop the aircraft right where you are right? And clarify where you are. If you can't see the markings for the taxiways and you blow by it and you get onto a runway, slow down and look a little closer, but stop where you are and clarify where you're going. 
All right? Especially now that you've clobbered the entire system. So they, it was clear enough to find Romeo 5, but they couldn't find Echo 4. Finally, these guys are off the runway. There's more to come. We missed that, sir. All right. They finally turn on to Charlie. I don't know if they ever hold short of Echo 5 or not. Uh, these guys were kind of a uh, small <laughs> small menace here at the Manila Airport. I've got a short Manila uh, Airport story for you, and then we'll wrap this one up. Years ago, I was uh, doing some work with the Navy, and I was on the USS Roosevelt, and I was there for a week. And I got launched off the Roosevelt in a cat shot, and they flew me into Manila. Now, I'd been to Manila before, but only as a pilot with the airline. And now it's we're, we're coming back. Uh, as a civilian, basically, but doing some Navy work. So they, they land me in Manila. I go to my hotel. I spend the night. I come back the next day. I've got three hours before my flight. I figured I've gotten to the airport plenty in plenty of time. The Uber driver is taking me up in front of the airport, and it looks like the exodus from Saigon in front of the airport. There are people and all of their bags, families and all of their bags, for as far as the eye can see. I, I'm, I'm thinking it's, it's a mile, this line, to just get into the airport. And everybody going through that door is going through a little security checker where they put their bag on a conveyor belt and it goes through. We haven't even gotten to security yet. They've got extra security right at the door. I look at the at the uh, the driver and I go, this isn't going to work. I go, just just let me out. Now I was dressed in a in a black coat, black uh, white shirt, uh, you know, just regular gray trousers, and uh, but I'm not traveling on airline business. And I thought, if I stand in this line, I'm going to miss my flight three hours from now. And then I, I realized I had my airline ID with me. So I grabbed my airline ID out of my bag. I put it around my neck. I kind of look like an airline pilot at the time. Yeah, you know, close enough. And I just go up to the door and I just take my ID and I go like that. And I show it to him. The guy goes, and he just ushers me. And he thought I was air crew that day. I think that was several years ago. I think I'd still be in that line in Manila today had I not been wearing what I wore and had my ID with me. So whew, dodge that bullet. That was a close one. I made my flight, got home all right. There's my mini Manila story um, for you. I probably won't travel back there anymore. Well, now you know. I'm Captain Steve. Fly safe. So there's been some real close runway incursion near midairs recently. Check out one of these videos if you want to see more.